Hello and welcome to the Every Other Saturday podcast, our brand new episode this week. Um, we'll be talking about, obviously, Leipzig, Old Firm, looking forward to the game Thursday. I mean, we've put ourselves in a good position to maybe do it, so we'll, we'll chat about that. As always, if you could uh, like, subscribe, share about for us, very much appreciated. Last week, obviously, we done a different episode where we sort of had the lowdown on, on RB Leipzig. Uh, we didn't cover the Motherwell game uh, or anything, but... Yeah, we had a, a great chat about RB Leipzig. We learned a lot. We saw that sort of in play on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, we were expecting a, a really tough challenge. Uh, we were expecting, obviously, they've got good players. We will need to defend well and, and set up in the right way, which, I mean, for, what, 87 minutes or something, we've done that perfectly. A um, couple of chances we had... We weren't expecting to really have a lot of chances in terms of like, the, the game plan who we were putting out, but we had a few chances. Maybe we could have done better in another day, but um, Leipzig struggled, I thought, to, to really break us down and to get anything going, obviously. And Kunku had that chance where he goes round down McGregor and he, and he skies it over the bar. That probably should have been 1-0, but we got away with that. But as a whole, I thought we defended really well, limited RB Leipzig to very little. Uh, and what was your thoughts on, on the 90 minutes? Uh, I got the same as you, mate. We both wanted some unique tactics. Both wanted to just come out with a 0-0. I'll take the 1-0. It was a sensational strike. Um, there's nothing you can you can do about it. Um, overall, I thought we, we played perfectly well. Played the way we wanted to play probably out there. Did have a couple of chances, maybe on the day, came out for Morelos, fit, you know, the ball's in the net. Um, but really, Connor Goldson, uh, Glenn Kamara, uh, Jordy Willis, there's like three or four players I thought popped in a real proper shift. Even Frank Kent, I thought we were backtracking as well. I thought he was he was doing his part, he was doing his job. You could tell he was blowing out his gasket at the end uh, a wee bit there. Um, but as you say, chances that Nkunku had, you were thinking to yourself, surely with the form he's in, he puts it in the net. Um, but he didn't. And thank the Lord um, that it's only 1-0. I'll tell you that much. We've got a real chance now. I'm telling you right now, this is this is it. You couldn't want it any any better way, Jack, than what we've got at home leg. Full 90 minutes at Ibrox. Place is going to be bouncing. This is it now, man. This is the chance. 1-0. Even when the goal went in, I thought, that's a good goal, first off. No. Nice. But I'll, uh, I'll take it. But I was maybe a bit annoyed um, that... I know if you're watching that boy that when he was at PSV and that, he, he likes to shoot for that kind of distance out there. Maybe, I know, I seen, was it Tav and Goldson? We were both a bit annoyed we can't not mm-hmm. get out quicker. I don't think he can do anything about it. I think it's a sensational strike. Um, but overall, mate, I'm happy with the game. I thought Gio, yet again, got a spot on. Um, obviously, one player, I will say, um, maybe just keep him for the league because in Europe, Score right, you're not good enough, son. I'm sorry, I, I, I hate to do this to you every, every sort of kind of week now. Um, I thought when you came on yesterday, you, you looked all right. Um, but uh, just just on the big European occasions, um, I don't want to see you on the team, in, in the team sheet, or uh, sitting on the bench. Um, maybe sitting on the bench, aye, but uh, no playing, because you're no, you're no good enough. Um, so, aye. But no, I'm 1-0, one, one I'll take it. And I'm looking forward to this Thursday, Jack. No, no, of course you have to be, as you say, pretty much. <laughs> it was a killer blow with the goal. Obviously, it was it was net like you were getting there. The game's nearly done. Just um, just defend the corner and f- for the whole. I mean, we get probably the most perfect header out of the box that you could want, and it just lands on his foot perfectly, strikes it well, and they get their breakthrough. Um, which was annoying, as I say, on the basis of the game. We defended so well. The game plan was was perfect. The substitutions that, that the manager made as well impacted the game at the time. Um, but as you say, for Scott Wright as well, I just I uh, up there, he's obviously been given a different role to lead the line we, we can, which I understand is going to be difficult, especially yeah. against the opposition. But uh, I, as you say, he doesn't really have the quality. I don't think <laughs> at the level to be able to do that. Uh, maybe he's a, an impact sub, see... Oh. If the game Thursday goes to we're needing goals in, in the last few 20 minutes or that, he's, he brings on pace, he brings energy. Like, as we saw in the, the old firm game yesterday, I mean, he had who was that Starfelt, he just he just blitzed straight by him. We get a chance in the box. He's obviously got a, a decent bit of quality, but I, on the whole, I just don't think he was really suited to the level. No, that's, that's all I'm saying. I just that you could tell he was just 
wasn't comfortable maybe and just you used to tell he was he was exposed, you could tell he just he wasn't just didn't look right. Um but no, when he came on yesterday he was I thought he was he was right at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um but as you as you said, you'll take it at the start of the game. It's one that we read by Leipzig. They seem to be pretty content with that as well, the celebrations after oh. uh, full time. They seem to be pretty content and not only winning the game but like bring us down, like we frustrated them a lot. Um, and I, I don't know if I would be so confident in going to Ibrox and doing the same thing again and having the amount of control that we'll have because I mean, we allowed them to have the ball, but they didn't really penetrate us a lot. Um, I respect that the game is going to be a lot different at Ibrox. We're going to maybe have a few key men back for that game, and, and I would imagine our team selection is going to be a bit different, hopefully, with a natural forward up there. So, um it's not going to be the case for we're going to sit back. It's going to be like we're going to go forward. And obviously their approach, they'll probably have more chances and they'll have more space to work in, which obviously we're a great team uh, has, as they've been this season. You'll need to watch out for that. But as you say, we'll talk about it as we as we go through everyone else. But on the whole, you couldn't really ask for a for a better performance for the team anyway. So one of the things, you just need to hold your hands up. We conceded the goal. It was a decent strike and, and we move on. But I, I thought their scenes after... Um, Full time seemed a bit concerning. Obviously, they're playing as we're recording this. They're playing the night, which right. obviously the league isn't helping them out too much. They've got to travel over here and then play on a Thursday again, so that could also obviously play into our advantage. Well, fingers crossed, it does play into our advantage. I said to you, I want them like that. I want them thinking they've um, they've that's them done it, um, that that they've got the lead. Similar to Bragg as well. Remember them a bit hang me after the game as well. So. False, false sense of security, that's what I want to win. Um, you could tell with Tav straight away, you know, we're going to get him back at Ibrox and, and we're going for it straight away. Full 90 minutes, um, I, I hope and I pray that we can uh, we can finally get the result that we all want. We're all on the beach on the holidays, Jack, as I would say. Um, looking forward to it if we can get there. But no, I just expect the team to say this Thursday, blistering pace, Barry Allen, that's what we are going to be doing. You ever seen no. that flash? No, the movie one because that guy's a bit controversial. But uh, the TV one, that boy seems all right. Blistering around, I'm hoping we just we go for it, man. We're going to war. Ninety minutes, let's get the result. I think that's it was um, <clears throat> it was uh, when the players were speaking after the after the game. I think he spoke to Aribo and Tavernier. I think it was on the, the interviews, and then also the manager. Like they seem pretty confident that they can okay. come back to Ibrox and and play their own game and and get the crowd is going to probably. Well, it has to be possibly maybe one of the best atmospheres Ibrox will ever witness, to be honest with you. So, um, as we've seen, we've seen teams come and crumble with that. Um, but then, into the bargain, every time we've played in a knockout game in uh, Europe this season, at Ibrox, we've started so fast. I think we've scored in like, the first 10 minutes of every, every game that we've played in. So, again, that'll be key. It was key at Braga to to score and, and get the game on level after about two minutes into the game. So something similar to that would be required again. But I, as you say, the atmosphere is going to be it's going to be top level. The players, the manager know that. Um, and it seems it will feed off and, and be more, more more confident under that. Obviously, there was a great sub- travelling support over there, but um, aye, it's all about Ibrox and we'll talk about it uh, as we go on. But it, was there any players in, in this Red Bull Leipzig team that you were sort of impressed with on the night because for mm. if I'll start off with that I, th- I thought um Josko Gavardio at centre half was was impressive. Um obviously when we had Adam on last week and he was going in depth we were talking about similarities between maybe him and Bassey and obviously a young centre half. I thought he applied himself very well, very comfortable with the ball and obviously we didn't really press their back line too much, but I thought he was he's really stood out to me as he's going to go far, I think you know. No, I definitely think he will go for Jack. He looks like a top centre half already. Um, listen, look, I thought we made him look bang average. I think that was credit to Gio um, and the players for the, for following the game plan. But overall, I do think they're a, they're a good side. That um, Austrian boy we've got in the middle of the park, he sort of stood out to me as well. Mm-hmm. One or two times. What's his name? Um, yeah, Lima. Lima. I was about to call him Lama or something there. But I uh, had Lima. Uh, I thought he looked all right. Um, as I say, Angelino the left back. Don't know how Pep Guardiola didn't rate him, um, but he's a top. Uh, he's a top left back. Um, he was causing one or two bits of problems down that side. I think they had to double on him, double up on him once or twice. Um, and it, you thought the main man for them was going to stand out. He probably would have stood out if he had put the ball in the net. 
Um, but no, I was over. Well, Silver, see when Silver came on the Portuguese boy, I do think he is lethal. I do think he's different to uh, Ratan Kunku. He's more of a natural centre forward. Um, mm-hmm. So Kunku seems to just like, float about the park, which is fair play to him. Um, but no, they do. They are, they are a great side. Um, obviously, Fallsberg came on an old, didn't he? So mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's one of one or two players you probably could name for them that will definitely stands out. Um, but overall, mate. None of them because they don't have Connor Goldson in the back line. That's why Jack. Tell you uh, why. We definitely die. We, we made them look pretty average, I thought, which was I, uh, as you say, a testament to, to the game plan again. But uh, there was a there was a few players you could obviously see he had did a great deal of quality and another day could have maybe turned it on and, and provided something different. But uh, I thought Vardio looking at him, I thought he's he's going to be a top centre half to come in, in years to come. But um on the or the old firm game then obviously. We part that up old firm game. I don't think MD was really like if he's just focused on this game Thursday, nobody was really bothered about the old firm game. Obviously when kickoff happens, it's totally different. You you want to beat them, but <laughs> um I thought with the team selection, I thought it was going to be a lot different. I thought there was going to be like maybe a Leon King or something starting. I thought maybe he would go complete, just uh, save our players for Thursday, but he brung in Sakal, obviously, to start. Davis started. Darfield, obviously, in for the start. So he made, he made a few changes the way he really could. Um, and I thought for, for 20 minutes in the first half, up until, obviously, Celtic's goal, I thought we were fantastic. And basically not even allowing them up the park and just constantly um, moving the ball with purpose and trying to make things happen down the, the left or the right. Kent probably should do better with that chance. He had um, 10 minutes in or something like that. sort of... Sort of scarfs a wee bit, but come on, how can he when he's got Barris just defending him? <clears throat> yeah, I know. I thought the Barris is just so weird because, um, like obviously St. Mirren and, and he played uh, when he came on against Braga away, and we sort of seen a new life of Barris again. Like maybe he's, he's worked hard. It's, it's like, I liked some of these interviews as well. He's been working hard in the background, and these chances would come, but. I mean, again, it's just job or defending. Like, up until obviously the, the goal, um, obviously on the right hand side, Sakala probably should track back a bit more. I know he's, it's not really in his sort of DNA as a footballer to be able to track back on that side, which left that Maida clear open to, to be able to fire the ball wherever he wanted. Obviously, Barisic should do so much better for, for clearing it and then just Jota gets in. And he, he scores, but I Barisic seemed in the in the first half anyway, back to his his self pretty much the full season, sort of cop out defending. We obviously seen it last time we went to Celtic Park as well. Uh, he had a good game in the cup actually against Celtic, but seems at Celtic Park it's just no it's no his stage. I thought he was better in the second half as as the majority of the team will be dominated the game in that half, but uh, it's just pure cop out defending, especially when we were on top and all that's our first proper chance and let them in at the game, get the lead, and then obviously their fans are going to be rocking after that. And um, for the majority of the, the other first half, they could have been 2-3 up with the with the chances they had. Obviously, that Maida, again, probably should score with a header. McGregor does well to put him off. Uh, Jota had another header. Um, but it was all about just getting to half time and sussing out what the fuck was happening because, I mean, it was, it was, a, good, it was a good start to the game, like what you would want going there. And... Just completely collapsed with a bit bad, of bad defending. Shocking defending. Barisic, I gave you my love son, and then you threw it away. You threw it in my face. Every time we go to Selic Park, mate, this guy, honestly, for the last two games anyway, been shocking. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I just... We were annoyed as we were all going after heads, obviously, because of fashion, whatever he's saying. He's not a footballer. He's never a footballer. He changed that in the second half, I'll tell you that much. He held to their strike. Um, but no, I agree with you, mate. First twenty minutes, we're doing a really well job. Well, well job. Um, hard, easy for me to get out. I thought Lundstrom <laughs> was running the game. I thought Stephen Davis was fantastic in the middle of the part. I think he played a beautiful ball. I think it was down the wing to Sakala, if I'm not mistaken, in the first half. Just a beautiful weighted pass. And um, Connor Goldson seemed on top of his game. It was looking positive, and then obviously, um, just lazy defending yet again for Barisic. It's like part cost us. Um, and then you're thinking yourself, probably, here we go. This is a collapse, and it? We're going to score two or three. Thank God it's only one now at half time, and then second half, you're coming away thinking yourself, well, how did we know win that game two or three? No. Jesus Christ, we ran them in that second half. Um, I really don't know how we didn't win that game at all. Maybe the refereeing. 
a bit. I know they were greeting about the referee in the last game. Um, but honestly, the sooner the better VARs up here. I cannot wait for it because it's gonna it's gonna really clean up a lot of the, the issues mm -hmm. up here and um, for me. But I mean, really, I mean Sakala couldn't do any more of that second one, I thought. And then I'm thinking myself, what is the nine jack doing? Lace the boots on, dig it in the bottom corner. Um, but no, overall I'm thinking myself, how are we you know coming away with a three one win? We should have <laughs> we ran that game. They didn't have anything in that second half. I really no. don't know how we didn't win that game. Especially at at, um, <clears throat> at Parkhead as well, you're expecting Celtic to come out and start fast and look to get the game won. Look, think about it. If they win yesterday, the, the league's won and it's against your I rivals. Won, like, surely, like obviously, no, but obviously it's won as we, ah, as yeah, we speak. Ah, but to get it over the line, like near enough there, and to put a performance out of that, obviously we we played very well in the second half. They had what one chance. And it was blazed over the barn. That's one that was offside. Actually, when you look back, he uh, was in an offside position. So, I mean, again, highlighting just minor errors that are, that are happening. Um, uh, but I, they didn't really do anything in, in the second half. If anything, McGregor was just sitting back and, and chilling out. Uh, and I thought just everything about the second half was giving me confidence for for which to come. We with this management and the players that are going to be here because they're committed to the cause and they have been for, I mean, since like, that Braga game and all that, I mean, I've saw great levels of this team that I never thought I would see, especially mm. when we played selling the cup. I mean, I think a lot of people were kind of looking at that game and being like, we've no chance against Celtic. Like the, the past two times we've played them, what have we saw that's going to give us any confidence going into the old firm games, but then going into the cup game, winning and, and playing so well after that and, as you see, like players like Lindstrom and, and Davis and Tavenier constantly pushing us forward, mm -hmm. Bassey, Goldson, especially when it's stacked up against us. We don't even have a striker, really, on the pitch. And we're dominating the game. If we have a striker on the pitch, the, the goals are there. Could you imagine if that, well, that one was... that falls back to Ryan Jack, falls to Kemar Roof, it's a goal. <laughs> it's just it's fine margins and, and missing players that have maybe cost us in the, the final third at times. But even at that, I put out tweets saying, how is Fashion Sakala a footballer? <laughs> you can't even control a ball. And then second Taffy has every one of our best chances, really. Um, takes his goal fantastically. I mean, the whole build-up for the goal yeah. is just fantastic. Beautiful. Scott Wright, I, that is what I like about Scott Wright. He's got that pace and that directness just to run at, run at people. He's just he's, he's got the directness to run. He, put, he plays a nice pass in. Fashion and Kent obviously link up, and it's a great finish into the the near Aye. post. No, no, I agree with you, with Scott. Right there, it is terrific. Look, I'm, I thought he was he came on, he had a great impact. Um, I'm not going to act like he's the best player since sliced bread, and um, like some people um, might. Um, I don't. I honestly, but he came on yesterday and he did really well. The play up to the goal was just beautiful. Um, very well. Sticking for Fashion Sakala, and you you tweeted it out, Jack, and I gave those in green. How is this guy at football? Because there was nothing in that first half I was seeing from him. Um, but honestly, overall, I thought we did really well. I can I tell you what, though, but you just saying there that size about a striker. Celtic were at full strength for the night. That's their full team, and, and they've had what, a week to prepare for this game. Look, like, they've not got weeks that. in between games in between. I don't know what they actually do. No, well, listen, look, see for me, see nothing for that Kyogo boy playing us so far. I think he quite honestly, he's quite a fouler. Mm -hmm. I noticed that with that Maki Marcus when he came and all. Two of our forwards are very hungry to get fouls um, straight away. I think that guy should have been booked to see the one we have in Conor Goldson and he just falls to the floor. Conor Goldson's actually going for the ball. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think their, their forwards are quite dirty bastards, to be fair. Um, I, do, I Honestly, I do. I've no, I thought that myself. I mean, look, Kyogo was apparently like this best strike in the league. Obviously, the goals to, to back it up, of course, but oh, the games yeah. against us, I mean, I've not saw one thing really for him that's warranted him being I like, think... so beloved or anything, but like, he's just didn't really have many chances or anything, but he's just, he's all round players basically just fouling people. <laughs> like, there was nothing really coming for him, I think. There was nothing at all for him. Um, I thought about the only quality player for him really was um, Jota that got the goal. He looked, he looked decent at all, but um, no, I just thought we did really well second half. We just dominated them. Um, it was a bit of, you can tell Stephen Davis is frustrated. You could tell on his face when he was frustrated coming off, and I thought, you do have a right to be frustrated. I thought Davis was class when he was on. Um, lunched him as well. Conrad Goldson, sensational man too. Back-to-back -back performances, just been phenomenal. And if a guy doesn't sign the contract, 
And this is a, really yeah, it's a guy point. playing his highest level now. Like, against, uh-huh. obviously, your rivals well, and stuff. I'll, I'll play uh, devil, devil's advocate here. Is he playing at his highest level because he knows his contract's up and he wants to get a hangy move? Do you know what I mean? Because let's not let's not lie. Some of his performances and all throughout the season have been a bit angry, but the last couple of games we can only go off what we've seen. He's been fantastic. Him and Calvin Bassey have been sensational. I kind of thought the same as well. Barisic was having a woeful first half, and I thought to myself, bring him off, bring King on. What have we mm-hmm. got to lose? Put King there and put Bassey at left back. Let's go for it then. Um, and I would like to see these lads start to get um, measured into the team right regularly. I'd like to see somebody like Leon King start to play a bit more. I think that the, the game coming up, you could definitely throw him and Lowry in there against uh, what's it, uh, Ross County and Dundee. Definitely can throw him in there, especially with what we've got to play for. But um, I just thought she's halfway random. Johnny Lundstrom. I said that about this guy before he even signed. And um, I'm, I'm just getting proven right. I told you, mate, as, as soon as he fell in love with the club, you'll see John Lundstrom play at his best. Honestly, sensational player. Um, Tav and all, I think Tav... Some people, it's happens to have all the time. I feel like where people just sort of forget that he's performing excellently well. Um, even you know what I mean? Like some player like Connor Golson, I say, is playing well, and if he's focusing on it, Tav for me and all has been fantastic the last couple. The of years. thing I love about Tav is he just never hides. Like he never, he never wants to like, not no. get the ball in. He always wants to get the ball and get us going forward. Though, and it, a lot of the time, I think it was in the second. A lot of the thing we in the second half from are pushing up. I was just constantly at it, man. That's what I'm on about. That's what I love about him. He's constantly going. I know me and you were a bit angry with a goalkeeper. McKenna would have wanted McLaughlin to play. Just mm-hmm. a bit of rotation. Um, a bit more confidence in McLaughlin for me personally than McGregor. I love Alan McGregor, but as we've said this season, he's he's done. Do um, you know what I mean? Uh, but I just thought yesterday we ran them in that second half. They did. They, there was nothing in it for them. Um, I mean... How did we know win that game? I'm still scratching my head. I'm still. It's like, just it's one of them, and all that. Obviously, we are going to that game and being like, play, play the kids, play whoever. Um, if we win, we win. But then you're coming away with it, and you're like, we should have won that game, and and you're thinking, especially with the Ryan Jack one. Ah, uh, that is absolutely How? diabolical. It's like it's like as if he is actual playing with Celtic at that point. You're just passing it back. Like, I just don't get what what it goes through your head to. Not just fucking scalp the thing, <laughs> just scalp the thing. It's a goal if you hit it anywhere but in Joe the, Hart's hands. I mean, it's the same with the one at the end of an all way was it Scott Wright? Fashion, but he passed it to him. And in fact, the fashion no game at back, and then he could have mm-hmm. had a chance, but he played it through his fashion. Back yourself, son. Top corner. No. I know they were complaining, and as I say, it was an offside or um, that Carter Vickers been fouled mm-hmm. or like but he's onside, man. Surely just. But f- for me, um, I say, like as you say, we're, we're really poor. Um, looking at their team again, Carl Vickers is, is the guy that's... Uh, Joe Hart was... See when, we were, see when we got that goal and we were pressing them and not letting them play out, he had no chance, no clue he was meant to do. Because then if he has, hits it long, Goldson wins it and we just go up anyway. Like there was, that was working very well, actually. Um, I liked that no, sort of yeah, in the game. Like that was perfect the way that was working out. We got maybe some of our best moments for that as well. Right, that's what I was about to say there. Got, honestly, that's why Guardi wouldn't rate him. Because that's the kind of play he would hang me and he, he couldn't handle it. I'm thinking about, listen, look, see if there's my loss there. But have you hounding him? Um, mm-hmm. But when we, we did it, mate, he was flapping. He Honestly, yeah. he... He was at video, which I, I don't know what to do. That was Joe Hart when that was getting hanged on him. Um, I think that's bang average. I really do. I, and I, I think do. we have, um, although Celtic have been very consistent this season, you can't take away for the fact that they've went like 30 on the oh, games unbeaten in the league. They've, they've done their part, but <clears> when we look at ourselves, we'll, we'll rue days like Aberdeen away from home and Ross County yeah. away and Motherwell at home and all that. All the points that we dropped have came back to, to really bite us um, in the end. It looks like Van Bronckhorst has sort of sussed out how to play Celtic and how to sort of manage the league form as well, which is good because, as you say, we looked a million miles away in these first two. Now we're, we've got Celtic's number, really, haven't we? We've, he's sussed out. He's improved consistently after every old firm game. Obviously, we lose the first two and then he gets two positive results um, for the next couple so I think he's done a, a really good job in sussing them out um, gives me as we said confidence going into next season we have him, uh, the ability to pick his I own team just, and stuff like that Just one thing that I need to say um, it's not about you, fully back you and what I'm seeing as I said to you it's going to take time, obviously you're hurting for the last old firm at Celtic Park you were 
gut crushing because you knew that was it done then and there. Um, but, but I tell you what, right now, Scott Arfield can't be at the club next season. I'm just saying it, Scott Arfield can't be there next season for me. I just, I'm just, I can't. Um, he's done, he's done know. well, I know, but I. Oh, shut up. Shut up. No, like, like overall, story. overall, like for the club, he's done well, but. Nah, I know, he's done well. He's done well. We know that. I brilliant. You're fantastic, mate. I can't see some of the slack passing and all for him yesterday. I can't, I want just young players in. Do you bring your players in? And the ball better back him, I swear. Seen this summer, see if Ross Wilson and them don't pull some magical tricks out their hats. It's, go, it's going to be chaos. There can't be any way that there's no money there either because look, look at the Europa League money. With, um, like there's money in abundance, hopefully. Um, especially, <laughs> that's I expect here, a few off the wage bill as well. So Aye. there's, no, but there's that's hopefully going to be funds. You can't, you can't keep players. Like, I like Arfield, love him. He's been fantastic. I don't care uh, really about anything else. I, what, he's, what to say here? Look, I'm just saying... You need to bring new players in. I've had enough of you watching Scott Arfield and all the, these man. You look at the bench and all, you're thinking to yourself, mm-hmm. if we have a couple there on the bench to bring on, who knows? Um, but full of confidence, back to you in the tactical department. He's really improving, improved himself. Um, I mean, you agree with me and all. You send me all that stuff for it, it, <laughs> in pain watching Scott No, Arfield. no, I'm, that, I, I'm his biggest <laughs> critic ever, but... No, um... I, look, I just think we can keep... Like, that's why... Players like Davis are linked to be going to like Simmering and all this part of like because you can't as much as you love them, do you know what I mean? You have to move them on, you have to bring fresh legs mm-hmm. in. And I would keep Steven Davis next season 100%. I think there's a steamroller player still where I just think I can't watch Scott Arfield miss passes and give the ball away and all this. You're on about hard tackles and all that. My boy Johnny Lundstrom can do that now. You understand me? You've got honestly, every time I look at Lundstrom, I just think to myself, do you or do you listen to Triple H time you play the game? Every time you're warming up, honestly, I just think. His face mm-hmm. is so focused and determined. I love him. No, of course, we, we all do. And I think that's maybe going to be what's going to happen for the remaining league games. We'll maybe see players being given starts, youngsters and that, because they're, yeah, well, they're only going to benefit for that. Like, I mean, he he came on yesterday as well. I'm sitting I'm <clears throat> in front of the telly. I'm literally praying. I'm like, please, prove me. <laughs> prove me right. And I thought for a five-minute five cameo or somewhere, I thought he'd done all right. He showed a, a great deal of confidence. He comes on to the part and his first job is to defend as well and he takes one for the team there. I, I genuinely thought he was going to get sent off. I'm like, you're kidding me on, man. This guy can't catch a break. But um, <laughs> no, he came on, thought he looked positive. I'm looking to see a bit more of him, hopefully, in, in the, the remaining league games. I know he's obviously not our player, but if we've got him here, our whole job yeah. is to to play him and develop him obviously for his career so I think playing the next few league games I want to see him Lowry McCann maybe coming in King uh, there, there are players at the end probably. of the day they're young players giving them a go so I'm, I'm looking forward to that but I know probably. we'll probably see probably. Arfield up front or something <laughs> I just I find it like how does he put Scott Wright before like a Diablo like, how is Scott Wright playing before this guy like as you say the quality that we've seen at Motherwell I thought his movement and what have you when we were at the Mullerwell game, I thought that was fantastic. He was you could tell he was a bit upset to come off. Um and then when he comes on your old firm game, does what MD should be doing, takes one for the team. And then a lot of the passing, a lot of the vision. I was like when he's playing the ball out wide, he's trying to do some stuff. Um I would definitely like to see him play. I just don't I'm like, how are you writing Scott right before him? Mm-hmm. I just I don't I don't get it. Maybe it's an attitude thing or what have you. I don't know what it is, but even Lowry, how's how, how's Lowry not getting a game? I don't know. I just I, I don't know why we seem to be the only team on the planet that doesn't trust to bring a youngster on or something. But um, you'll see. I mean, Leeds and like they've they've had to do it. Obviously, they've had to uh, play youngsters and. But that's what we want to do. So. It's... But then you like you've got like, Tyler Morton for Liverpool starting a Champions League game. Like you're looking at things like that, and you're like. Would would we ever start Lowry <laughs> and on Thursday? No, we wouldn't. Um, which is weird. But I, I'm I'm on the fence that I want to develop a young players and steady. I mean, let's be honest, Davis and Arfield probably aren't going to be here. So instead of playing them, why not just play play the youngsters? Ah, you would, ah absolutely. You want to develop your youngsters into the team, and they're free. That I definitely want to see get developed into the team. But also at the same time, what we're all saying, come on. The money's there now. There's no excuse here. There's no excuse, especially for how far we've got in this tournament. Need a big signing in this summer. I need somebody, and probably that big signing in the board size is going to be if we sign Alan Ramsey. 
Mm-hmm. But I'm, <laughs> I'm, fi- I'm fine with if that I'm happens. Fine I'm, I'm fine with starting off that for a benchmark and getting a player of that quality in. But uh-huh. it's all about because I, I personally think there's going to be quite a big clear out in the summer anyway. We, there needs to be. We players getting off the wage bill. So um, I am I'm expecting a, a pretty active transfer window. Last season, we did three players or something we brought in in the summer. So I think it's going to be a lot coming in, especially with a new manager and. Obviously, he's only had the January. Probably wasn't his signings, and then in the summer he's got the, the the time to be able to work and see who he wants to bring in. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see who he's got under his sleeve. Do you know I thought? watching that old from the second half. I thought put Rory McKay on, put him on the ball, put the ball in it. Mm. Put him in it. When, when, you, when you're looking for a striker, you've got a guy who scored what about hundred plus goals for Bayern Munich sitting there. <laughs> so I know. Um, yeah, I pretty much that's what cost us, to be honest with you, with the victory. The one off the post is obviously it's heartbreaking. It's not going in, but um, if, if we had players, uh, Morelos or Roof, we would have probably won the game uh, pretty comfortable in the end. But all credit to the players that actually came on and played their part. And I mean, the full squad's getting used at the end of this season, which is it was good to see. There's players getting minutes everywhere. So. For, for players like Scott Wright and, and Sakal, obviously Wright didn't play very well on Thursday, but for Roney sleeves up in the league game and, and getting the job done, um, I've got no questions about that. Fashion, I thought, has been good. Maybe just needs that bit of confidence with that goal. Maybe doing the world would be good. Yeah, going into, obviously, it's going to be big if, he, if he's leading the line on Thursday as well. So, yeah, I was happy with the game. Obviously, the, the league is what it is this season, but yeah, it gives me confidence going into next year. And... It all comes down to this now. Red Bull Leipzig uh, at home, one 0 deficit as we said. Ibrox is going to need to be in full voice, and the players are going to need to feed off that energy. Two possible big players back in Roof and Ramsey as well. D- if they're back, do they go straight in for you? Uh, Roof does Ramsey, doesn't he? I maybe bring Ramsey second half, because um, honestly, I didn't think we would do as well. Midley part wise, as we, mm-hmm. we did in Thursday, I think pff, it's all about what Gio wants to do. And I, I reckon, I don't know, I think maybe what we did with Aribo that was working for like a sort of 20 minutes, was it? I think that maybe could think, honestly, I just think we need to go for it straight away first. Like what we did in um, Braga, I had no chance to look. Do you know what I mean? I just seen Taff put the ball in the net and I'm getting mental. Do you know what I mean? Get some guy in the head, what am I? It's, <laughs> it's, uh, you just need to, as you say, start fast. Like you've got literally nothing to lose anymore, obviously. The leagues. The league's what it is. The game's as we, say, we can just Listen, play whoever, but everyone needs never, to be flung at us. They have no. I know he came on and he was like United in Paris. Not they've got nothing on Ibrox. I'm sorry, United is a museum. Paris, I've never been. I kind of commented that, um, but I'm telling you right now, they've never been anywhere like Ibrox. Ibrox will be jumping, and I'm telling you right now, I'm going to predict it. They're going to fold like Braga. They're going to fall to pressure. They may have one or two chances. I won't rule them out with that. I do think it'll be a competitive game. But I'm telling you, they will fold like Braga and they'll that pressure will get to them. I'm telling you, that atmosphere will. I'm hoping we start off fast. The ball gets put in the net and it's the game on. And we just go for it. We've got nothing else to lose now. Semi-final, we've got it in our home court. Chance to go to Spain for a final of the European Cup. I mean, we couldn't remember the last one really off the top of our heads. Um, this one, we do it, mate. I'll swim over to Seville, man. I'm telling you right now. I'll be swimming over there and I can't even really properly swim proper. Do you know what I mean? I'm drowning halfway over, but I'm telling you, man. I <laughs> if you get there, that's the main thing, you know. That's, exactly. That's know the way we we'll need to look at it. Like, even if we don't have uh, Ruth or Ramsey back, we're going to need to find a way to be able to go and, go and do it. Um, I would, looking at the team, I would I would play Ramsey for the start if he's ready and I'd play Ruth. Obviously, I think Ruth... Uh, sort of picks himself if he's ready. Aribo and Kent out to either wing. Jack Lundstrom, Barisic, Bassey, Golden, Tav, McGregor, probably strongest 11 we could put out in terms of European competition that we've um, been accustomed to see, obviously, against Braga. I think it was the exact same team as that. So, yeah. I mean, they know exactly what it's about. I think Ramsey, if Ramsey's fit, man. Ramsey just gives us that control in, in the middle of the park. Like he's, uh, he's, I think he's going to be vital if we if we get him ready. I hope, I pray he's ready. The only thing with Ramsey is, is obviously I would play him in this game straight away if he's fit and ready to go, but at the same time, I'm also thinking about fitness-wise, so, um, maybe if we want him for a cup final or potentially no. for the final. 
So that's my only qualms with Ramsey, and I hope my boy Glenn Kamara did well. No, uh, you after. need to look at the players that stood up and, and done the task when obviously he wasn't there and pick it for that. So again, Ruth is about the only one I'm from back in there. I'm saying you're going in sun straight away because could you train. imagine if Ruth pulls up a, a Braga level performance again? <laughs> I mean, hopefully not all of them are offside this time, but I mean, hopefully... Ah, well, listen, I'm only offside, but I'm telling you right now, I don't think any of them are off, but anyway, no, listen, I hope if Ruth's fit, you've got to play him. Um, I, I just hope we go for it, we just give it our all. I'd even throw Connor Goldson up front, I'm telling you. See that strike at Dundee away, I'm telling you, that was phenomenal. Mm. I'd put the big man up, scissors kick them into the back of the net, give them that physicality, um, but I just feel like they'll fold, man. I, I might be wrong, you never know, but just being at the last European home game, mate, and what it was like, that atmosphere can catch people and they can be like, hold on a minute. Well, I don't know, I'm just praying. I just want Rangers to rest now. I know I've been saying, oh, the league and all this and that, but I tell you what, we are where we are. I'll have the biggest smile on my face if I see James Tavernier, a player who's been with since the championship, to come up, pick up that trophy and lift it in Spain. Oh, my God. I mean, I lose my mind. I know, and oh, it's, it's weird that you're even sitting with the reality of that could happen. Um, but it's just, it's it's all set up for us. It's all like pretty much the most ideal situation, obviously. Losing the goal no, was we, a gut, gut punch, but you would have took this all day long. We're in the position, the, the driving seat really, with the atmosphere as well, you go and, go and do it now. Do you know, sorry, I know it's saying me, but I just wanted to say it there. Do you know what would be the best part of it as well? Rangers will have that, and my boy Greg is sure will just show up with a ball and door, and he'll put that waving to the Ibrox, and I'll put that. I know you had it in your own, Greg. No, no, telling you the Indian Super League golden boot or something, you know. Um, it's, yeah, again, looking at our striking options, I've been mean, Greg Stewart would have probably been starting at the moment if we still had him there, <laughs> which is annoying to even think about. Um, but I, as I say, I, I think that'll probably be. The team, if everybody's ready, I'm looking forward to the, the press conference on Wednesday. Get the confirmation of that. I'm, I'm praying, obviously, the two of them are back um, for this one. If not, probably Sakala uh, will, will, will play and probably Glenn Kamara then at that point. But I'd, I'd like to have Glenn Kamara as like somebody to come off the bench and, and sort of freshen up the midfield if we need it. Um, but it's, I, I, I'm excited. I just kind of get away from the fact that we're, we're in the position that we're in and it basically all is lying on where we've played our best football in Europe this year at home against, I mean, Borussia Dortmund, Red Star Belgrade blowing them away, Braga blowing them away. I mean, this is another opportunity to, to go and do the same, to, albeit probably a better team. Uh, as we said, they'll not want to come and just sit back. They, they'll take their chances as well when they see fit, but we're here. <laughs> I can't. I can't believe it as well. I just can't believe it. There is a potential for us to make a final. And by the way, I'm going to say it right now. Frankfurt are in the final. I think Frankfurt have been fantastic. If you just seem to have the same sort of yeah, um, attitude as Real Madrid do in the season Champions League, just you score, that's fine. We're going to score you. You know what I mean? They'll go until the end. Um, I do think they'll make the final. Um, but I'm just playing. We gave it on on Thursday. And we, we can potentially find ourselves um, in a final um, in Europe, which would be sensational, Jack. Sensational. No, no. Great. Um, and obviously, Leipzig, they welcome back a couple of first-teamers as well, Orban, Simican, and uh, Campo as well. So they've got added depth into, into their squad too. They're probably starting their back line as well. So... Semikan is obviously young. Don't know how he'll take it. As we said, we we had him last week as well. He didn't know how maybe young centre halves are going to react to the atmosphere. So that'll be something to watch out for. Um, but they've got that cool head in there now. We we Orban. He's more experienced than he's older. Obviously, hope What's maybe marshal them through it. Orban. Who do you play for? Well, he's Hungarian. That's about as much as I know. And he's obviously played with Red Bull mm-hmm. Leipzig. So, um, definitely an LMS in their team, son. But it's Ibrox semi final of Europe. I'm telling you right now, I don't care who they've got. It's 11 v 11. They're going to fold. Well, I, I, fold. I, I, you're very confident. I'm liking how confident you are. I'm, I'm, not confident. St- I'm, I'm still shaking myself. Like, I have, I'm bricking it, mate. I'm bricking it. I'm honestly. I'm I'm going with false confidence here. I just I've, honestly I want to win this tournament. Now, as, as I said, 
I know we all, I went on about uh, you're all young, we play well, but I don't care now. I just we're here. We're ready to go. Let's let's just try and win it now. Let's give it everything we've got in the first day. Um, but I am bricking it. Don't don't think I'm not man because I do think they're a quality side. Um, you've got to be a quality side to be um, where they are in the league. Um, but I I guess they're a good team, mate. But uh, I just want Rangers to win. And course. as we said at the start of the episode as well, we with them obviously playing the night having to travel over they're they they home the, away? Uh, they're away from home as well so they've got the position oh. they're in the position obviously they are like in the top four spots for the Champions League but there's teams creeping up on them they need to sort of go full strength in the league as well so it can only benefit us that they're going to be playing the amount of games that they are in such a short number of days and I mean that's obviously going to be a clear advantage we've got more time to recover and, and prepare for this one they're, they've got a hectic Even period. Even if they go to extra time penalties and all, by the way. Mm-hmm. Surely they'll, they'll be done out or not. I mean, <laughs> we, we put extra time Braga, extra time uh, Celtic, and, and we looked like the completely fitter team in both both occasions. Yeah. We, could, we could have went another 120 minutes if we wanted on the night, yeah. um, which is a testament, again, to the, the training and all that the players do. The players that look in peak condition, especially yesterday as well. I thought clearly the fitter team was us. Um, and I think if it does go to the extra time, I mean, we'll have that upper hand as well. Um, but it's looking at their individual players in Kunku. Danny Elmo, I thought, had a really, really quiet game. I think maybe Andre Silva will uh, come in for this one instead of uh, Shobosley, I think it was, it started the game. So they've obviously got that, what works for them. I think there'll maybe be a couple of changes for, for them, depending on what team they put the night. Who? That uh, Omo. No, Danny Omo. I, mm. I just, it oh, didn't really suit, suit him the game, to be honest with you. He was kind of lost, I thought, especially for a player. Yeah, the quality he has with the Spanish national team and that. I was expecting maybe a lot more for him, but we handled him pretty pretty fine. Yeah, yeah, and Kunku is obviously going to be a danger man. I don't think he's going I to think be... I think Silver plays, as you've said there. I see if Silver plays. Silver gives him more of a, a direct thing. I honestly think he would score. I do think he would put the ball in the net. I'm not rating that in Kunku out, um, but... He's not going to be as restricted as he was in the first leg, no. I don't think. He's going to get more chances, I think. So Why? Because we're going to be so far up the park. We're going to be trying to push the game so far. So the boys also got to, if you're a real striker, you've got that predator instinct. They're just going to buy your time. You'll get. You'll definitely get a goal. Yeah, as I say, they're a dangerous outfit. I know, mate, if you think I'm sounding confident, I'm really no confident, Jack. Well, I'm more confident. I back my team, of course I do, but I'm bricking it. I'm just so nervous and excited at the same time for this game. Um I don't think they're a, they're a quality side, but if they, they play silver over maybe in Kunku, they play the two of them. They might get some joy. You never know. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. We're looking forward to Thursday. We need to wait and see who's injured, who's not, who's going to play, um, and look forward to it that way. But as we said, Ibrox, anything can happen. Uh, we've seen it so many times this season. We need one last push for the players and, and everybody that's going to be there. One last push at Ibrox. And the way I'm thinking about it is... We're possibly there. You're on that last rep. you got to, you got to rep out another two. Come on, rep out, finish strong. That's what it is. Benching, finish off those two reps, son. Come on. That's what no. this is. Um, so I. And looking over Europe as well, she said Frankfurt um, possibly going to be in the final. West Ham tell you by the way they were the one to get that game done at and at home i mean the fact that they've went there one two one and seen the sort of atmosphere and what they've done at a barcelona in the last round i think they're strong favorites to probably go into the final so um it'll be interesting to see what happens in that one and again all the games are sort of nip and tuck there's only a goal in between them even looking at the conference as well leicester won each with roma so when the first roma. legs don't really determine everything obviously Proceeding sort of with caution, not to get totally dominated or anything. But second leg, West Ham are going to be going for it. We're going to be going for it. Leipzig, Eintracht Frankfurt. It's going to be. It's going to be good this season. If we don't make it any further, this season's Europa League has been fantastic as a whole. We, all the teams that have been in it, um, I think it's been one of probably one of the best. <laughs> or maybe I'm being yeah. a bit biased because we've been so good. But I think I've really enjoyed just the Europa League as a whole this year. No, I think we find ourselves saying that quite a lot. We enjoy the Europa League sometimes more than the Champions League, obviously because we take part in it. But um, no, I think the Europa League run's been sensational, as we said there. Even if it, we do end up potentially you know, making the final, what a run, fantastic run. Um, proud of the players. 
looking at the brink that we were going out or potentially going into um, the Conference League. Um, so, nah, I'm proud of the players, what they've given this season. You were sort of dismissing it in your back of your head, as I said. You were just wanting to win the league. But European run, chance to be a part of history. This is history. Um, you can't. This won't be repeated unless, obviously, and our team does make it eventually to the final, what have you. But, no, I'm just I'm proud of the players, proud of everything they've gave, especially since when Gio took over. That's when Europe, for me, really picked up because we've got a manager who really seems to understand and how we break teams. And You know what I mean? He knows what he's doing in Europe. And it's took him some time um, with, with our game. And now we look fantastic. We're ready for next season. We're looking forward to next season. But get a wee bit of business to finish up here. We've got to um, dustle off a couple of people from Deutschland. Um, we'll do it on a Thursday. Ten rounds. Sparring. Uh, no, I'm just... Come on, Rangers. Come on. Let's go for it. Uh, mm. Aye. And that's it. That's, that's the Rangers part done. Looking forward to Thursday. But... As we say, we see we saw the weed scarf. You're looking to get your oh, I, thoughts I, I, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leeds, yeah, that's like Everton, you know, Burnley. Who's going down? Um, well, hopefully no leads, but uh, just the way I'm feeling at the moment, it's no, no the best. Um, I'm surprised you don't want to talk about your, your other mob doing the, the quadruple, um, which will harm. I do feel like it will harm. Uh, but no, I just I don't know. I watched the Everton game. As every Leeds fan was probably watching the Everton game just to make sure that they were done, they were buried. You know I mean, there was a bit of dirt on them. They were in the championship. Just feeling a bit uneasy. Um, just don't feel like we have anything in the final third. I think Rafinha needs to look at the side of the wall, where it said side before self, Billy Bremner. Um, please look at that, Rafinha, because they had a chance in the uh, City game. I don't know when, it, first, second half. I can't even remember. It doesn't matter because we get battered. But it wasn't a game where we did get battered fully. We, we played well. We did all right. Heartbroken my boy Stuart Dallas is, is probably out for the rest of the season. Um, but I'm just um, I like Jesse Marsh I like his positivity he's you know we gotta keep going man I like that I like that I like my Americans in my, my football um, but I just um, I'm, I'm a bit worried that's all it is Jack just with the fixtures we've got Arsenal look like they're in form depending on what Chelsea say to do with FA Cup and then you've got um, Brighton who are a difficult team as it is and then we've got to go to London where we don't really historically have a best record so it is it's a bit of a worrying time for me but you never know, Brent, for, uh, Burnley might fall. I just want everyone to get relegated. I think everyone's on the same page. You spend all that money, you deserve to be relegated if you're not doing something with it. Um, but if we do go down, I don't think it's on MD, but the board. I just don't think the board have backed Bielsa. I don't think they... Depends, I think they might turn Jesse Marsh into a bit of a... Not, not a yes man, but they'll go. He's just a kind of players want to bring in, you develop them. Um, so I, But uh, I Liverpool winning all four trophies, Jackie. As you were saying just before there, again, the Champions League has been good this year as well. I thought like, Liverpool, I look like they're going to maybe, I, th- I think City will still win the league, but uh, I think the Cup and, and the, possibly the Champions League is going to be Liverpool's this season. I mean, I just don't see any team, obviously, apart from Man City, <laughs> really stopping it. Um, obviously, Chelsea in the Cup uh, final, of course. I don't really, Chelsea no, have been disappointing. It. Tell you who stops your, your dream of your, your four trophies, Ric Flair. Woo! For Real Madrid. Real Madrid, they're winning the Champions League. Karim Benzema going to do it. Ballon d'Or. I think Manny is a can, uh, candidate for the Ballon d'Or. Obviously Benzema as well, but Greg Stewart's winning it all day long. Nah, so we've got our winner. If we were on that team, uh, it'd be done already. Aye. But... Um... <laughs> Aye, uh, nice to finish off on something different, I guess. Hopefully Leeds don't get relegated. Praying that Everton get relegated, it would be lovely to see, but it's getting more unlikely as they oh. keep paying up big results. I know you just keep going, but I'm just going to say it before we go. John Terry, you are a rat. Um, but I were all good. Nah, John Terry as a rat as well, of course. I hope he knows that. I seen he was blocking folk on Twitter on that yesterday as well. So. Is he? Nah, he's gone back. Money uh, on pop. Aye, anyway, uh, let's go on to Thursday. Hopefully it's a memorable one. Hopefully we're back covering um, something very special. And then aye, next week's podcast, we'll see what's in store. So we'll see you then.